Clarity on Fire, a podcast for people who know what they don't want out of their life and career, but aren't sure what they'd rather be doing. In a world where it's easy to exist, but hard to feel alive, we, Kristen and Rachel, two certified life and career coaches, are here to help you cut through the information overload, get unstuck, and focus not just on how you can have a career you're passionate about, but how to create a whole life that feels fulfilling. So join us here, where we serve up inspiration and down-to-earth wisdom in a way that only two best friends can. We want you to experience the relief of knowing that, yes, you're allowed to want more out of your life and career. And no, you don't have to wander through the dark anymore. Our job is to light the fire that shows you the way. Let's go. I've never met a person who... A, said they didn't procrastinate. Didn't think it was a problem. Like, everyone admits to what you mean. Everyone's like, oh, I'm such a terrible procrastinator. I'm like, you're a human. I don't (laughs) think it's a characteristic that's unique to certain people. I just think everyone is really good at procrastinating because it's just part of the human nature. Built in. If you meet a person who's like, oh my God, I'm not a procrastinator at all. I feel like it is a red flag because what it means is they're a crazy perfectionist control freak. Or they're not aware of their procrastination because Maybe. everyone does it to some extent. Sorry for shading any of you people who are like, I'm not a procrastinator. And I'm I think not a some people freak. are worse than others at yes. procrastinating. That is yes. true. Some people, it's not so much a flaw. It just is, they get stuck in it occasionally, whereas some other people... Chronic. Just chronic procrastination. Chronic. But we all do it. I just think people who don't procrastinate, I don't trust them. That's what I'm saying. Right, yeah. Also, procrastination is not always a bad thing. No, no, because sometimes it can signal... Intuition. Yeah, like you just shouldn't be doing that thing. Right. Okay, so like that's what this blog is about, question mark? Sort of. It's about when you get stuck. (laughs) Okay. Well, for the people who find themselves more chronically in procrastination, or more often than they would like, at least, this is something to get you out of the purgatory of being stuck in procrastination. Okay, I'll take that. Yeah. And we'll be back at the end with some recommendations because we had another episode about procrastination almost a year ago that you should listen to. Okay, let's hear that. How to escape procrastination purgatory. Have you ever wanted someone to let you off the hook for all the things you don't want to do? You know, the things that keep nagging at your mind that you know you should do, but for some reason you just keep procrastinating on. Wouldn't it be nice if someone just swooped into your life and said, it's okay, you don't have to do those things anymore. I'm granting you full permission to let them go. I wish for that all the time. So today, let me grant you permission to do just that. You have total permission to not do the things you've been avoiding. It probably sounds like I'm promoting mass laziness. Like I'm giving you a free pass to ignore your responsibilities and essentially become a selfish, irresponsible, lazy sloth. But that's not at all what I'm doing. Although I do believe most of us could use a bit more selfish and lazy downtime. We're also damn busy all the time and neglecting our own needs. But that's a topic for a totally separate post. No, today what I want is for you to get off the fence and stop hanging out in procrastination purgatory. I want you to firmly and intentionally decide what you will and won't do instead of getting clouded up and bogged down in all the shoulds. By giving you permission to let it go, I want to push you out of avoidance mode and into decision mode. When someone gives you permission, or even when you give yourself permission, to not do something that's been nagging at you, one of two things will happen. One, You'll feel immense relief, like a weight has been lifted off of your shoulders. You'll feel spacious and free. Or you'll feel discomfort, restlessness, and a desire to defend the thing you wanted to do. You'll want to say, but wait, I do want to do that. That's important. I can't let that go. Letting yourself off the hook can be counterintuitively motivating. A few weeks ago, one of my clients who's looking for a job let's call her Brianna, emailed me with a confession. Brianna told me she'd been hardcore procrastinating on applying for jobs. 
In fact, she hadn't even looked at a job listing in over a week, even though she'd be the first to tell you that getting a new job was her number one priority. Every time she thought about searching for jobs, updating her resume, or writing a cover letter, she wanted to crawl into bed and block out the world. The idea of job searching, combined with her guilt and self-criticism for procrastinating, were draining every ounce of her energy. I wrote back to Brianna and said, if forcing yourself to job search isn't working and seems to be adding to your negative momentum, then let's take a break from that. You're unlikely to land your dream job when you're angrily forcing yourself to apply for jobs to escape your current situation anyway. So taking a short break isn't a huge risk at the moment. Remember how you mentioned the idea of going back to grad school a while back? And remember how much that excited you? What if, just as a mental break, you shift your focus temporarily and look into a few schools? As soon as I gave Brianna permission to not focus on her job search and to give her attention to something else, her energy around the entire subject shifted. Instead of resenting and avoiding her job applications, she felt a surge of motivation to jump back in full force. When we talked the next day, she told me she'd applied to three jobs within the past 24 hours. I didn't expect Brianna to respond the way she did, but her reaction makes perfect sense. Once something is a choice instead of an obligation, procrastination dies away and motivation takes its place. When letting yourself off the hook is just kind. Sometimes you'll find the thing that you keep procrastinating about really is just an unnecessary should that you're imposing on yourself or someone else is imposing on you. In that case, giving yourself permission to let it go will feel like a massive relief. This happened to me just recently. Rachel and I get approached with opportunities and requests quite a bit. And turning things down has become a necessity for us to maintain our sanity. But sometimes I find myself tempted to say yes, even when my gut reaction is, oh, I really don't want to do that. We recently got asked to speak at a corporate women's event at a company where I'd presented a few years ago. I was tempted to say yes for multiple reasons. They'd be paying us, it was good exposure, and we'd likely get a few clients from it. But I remembered my last experience there, and I hadn't felt good in that environment. I couldn't explain why, I just didn't want to go back. I knew if I said yes, I'd be kicking myself later. I decided to give myself permission to let it go. I imagined responding to that email, which had been sitting in my inbox for over a week, draining my energy every time I looked at it, with a, no thank you. And all I felt was huge relief. So that's exactly what I did. And I felt immediately lighter letting it go. Permission is clarifying. Hanging around in an avoidance mode with all kinds of shoulds hanging over your head is uncomfortable. It's heavy. And it makes you feel totally out of alignment. So whenever you find yourself saying you're going to do something and it keeps not happening, stop hating on yourself and give yourself permission to let it go or ask someone else to let you off the hook. Then check in with yourself. Do you feel pure relief? Do you feel disappointed, upset, or anxious to see it go? Neither answer is wrong, and it's important to honor your initial gut feeling. So now I want to hear from you. What have you been procrastinating on or avoiding lately? When you give yourself permission to let it go, what's your gut response? Leave a comment to let me know. All right. If you want continued listening on this very fascinating subject... You could go back to January 2019. So scroll your little thumb all the way back to January 2019 and listen to our side chat about how to stop procrastinating. How is that different than this episode? It's a longer episode, uh, of course. It's it's more in-depth. We give a lot. I gave one strategy. Oh, well, we one. talk about a lot more we stuff. We talk about that. a lot more. I'm not even sure we talk about the one I just mentioned. This is an old blog, by the way. This is from 2015. I was surprised. I was like, this is still pretty good. So that's okay. So they're like, why would you publish something where it's just not, it's like one little point when you already had an episode that was a lot of points. I'm like, because this is an old blog. We're bringing it back. Yeah. If you want to blog on Tuesday, sometimes you just and also accept what we're giving you. They, a lot of people don't scroll, scroll so far back and it's a relevant no. topic. No. And if they did, there's so many others that you could get distracted. Exactly. So we okay. got to bring you some fresh takes on, <laughs> fresh on topics. Four and a half years old. Well, I edited it a bit. Okay. <laughs>
Okay. And then also there was a blog that Kristen wrote or probably republished, I don't remember, from October, so don't scroll back that far, called How to Get Out of Analysis Paralysis. Always a classic. Yep. Which you can procrastinate if you're stuck in analysis paralysis. So Mm -hmm. that one is relevant. And then Rachel wrote a blog that she republished back in August of this year. And it was about how you will never be done. No. Nope. You don't get to cross off all the things off your to-do list and then that's when you get to live life and relax. Nope. Yeah. Life gets lived when to-do lists are still undone. So if that makes you uncomfortable, I suggest you listen to that episode. Also, if you're putting something off until this other thing is done or until the right time and you're procrastinating because of timing, just know it's it's never going to be the right timing because you're never going to be totally done with anything. No. <laughs> no, there's only like <laughs> a good timing or nothing. Yep. That's kind of it. Okay, we will see you on Friday with a new episode with a dating and relationship coach. We are getting into the topic of codependence. I'm so Mm. excited. I love talking about codependence. I hate codependence, but that's why I love talking about it because I do have that little streak of drama that I enjoy getting into that messy, messy good stuff. Well, and Carla is fantastic. I mean, she just drops so many nuggets of wisdom. Mm -hmm. She got a whole book. She, has, she wrote a book on the topic, so she knows what she's talking about. So this is going to be a good one. Okay, come back on Friday for some dating and relationship wisdom. Yes, we will see you then.